Let's create this stylized house together. Let's start by deleting everything from the default scene and adding a cube. It is going to be a fast paced video, but if you would like to watch a detailed course, I have a 4 hour class on Skillshare, where I create the same scene and explain all the processes in detail. We just need to scale the cube on the z-axis and we will get the basic shape of the house. I created a couple of loop cuts in the middle of the house and I extruded this area along the normals to create the separation between the first and the second floor. Then I prepared to create the windows on the first floor. I made three horizontal loop cuts and two vertical to create the base for the window. I extruded the window part inside the house just a tiny bit and I extruded the windowsill part outside. We need another vertical and a horizontal loop cut in the window area to create four glasses, which we could create with the insert tool by inserting individual faces. Now when we know how to make a window, we can create another one. And let's adjust the position for the first window. Now it is probably a good time to create a door. It is a similar process to window creation. First we will have a couple of loop cuts. We want to insert the faces, but we don't want the boundaries on the bottom part of the door. To do that we need to delete the floor. We don't need it anyway. Let's extrude the door frame and that's the door that we need. Extruded circle and the squashed UV sphere will make a great door handle. Let's create the balcony. At first I will model the balcony door. The process is the same like we did with the windows. Then I will select some edges below the balcony door. I will duplicate those and separate. Now we have a new object. I will extrude this and it will be my balcony floor. Again, I will select the edges of the balcony floor, duplicate, separate and extrude. It will be the balcony railings. Let's delete the geometry on the railings and add symmetrical loop cuts. Apply the wireframe modifier and voila! The floor of the balcony does not have any thickness, so I will extrude it a little bit. The roof of the building looks weird. Let's fix it. Select the outside edges of the roof, duplicate, separate and extrude. That is the same process as making the balcony railings. Next duplicate the top edge and separate it. We will need this later. Delete edges in the middle of faces and add a loop cut with 16 cuts to every side of the railing. I choose 16 cuts because it fits my scene, but you can choose any number you want. Apply wireframe modifier and you have the railings. Apply a skin modifier to the top edge that we separated earlier. Scale it down by pressing Ctrl A and that is going to be the top of our railing. I want to expand the roof like we did with the middle of the house. So I will add a loop cut at the top of the building and extrude the top area along normals. We need two more windows on the second floor. Creating both windows is the same process as we did with the windows on the first floor. However, this time I'll make those two simultaneously for time-saving purposes. We finished modeling the house, so let's create some other details for this scene. First, I will make the ground. Now we can make the street lamp. I will start from the circle and extrude it to achieve the lamp's shape. For other details, I just added three stretched cylinders. And I finished by modeling the part of the lamp where the bulb is. Again, I extruded it from the circle. Next is the bench. I will start from the plane and I will extrude it. That is going to be the leg of the bench. Let's duplicate and rotate the leg 180 degrees. Now we have another leg. I will continue to add the details, but I will add the cubes this time. The bench has a lot of similar details, so I will reuse the existing mesh by duplicating it a lot. It's time to model more detail on the ground. I want to add the tiles to the sidewalk. First I will model one tile. It's just the extracted plane with many cracks and broken corners. Then I will duplicate it to the parts of the scene where I want those tiles to be. They look the same so I will rotate them randomly to give more variation. Now we have modeled everything so we can add colors to the scene. In this project I didn't use any custom shaders. Instead I used the standard BSDF shader with different color and roughness values and an emission shader for the windows. I call this part damaging the house. We have a pretty lovely model right now, but it needs more character. 
So I scale down the center of the house, I add a bunch of cracks and weird rotations. Railings are too straight, so I rotate them randomly. I even remove a couple of them. And finally I cut the hole in the wall to imitate the paint cracking from the wall. I think it's an excellent time to add the camera and find the angle from which we will see the scene in the final render. When we switch to the render view, we can see that our scene is very dark. That's because we don't have any lighting sources in the scene. At first I will add the area light to imitate the moonlight. We also need the background. So let's extrude our ground plane to fill the camera view. Enable Bloom on EV rendering settings if you don't see the glowing effect from emissive materials. Also enable screen space reflections if you want the light to reflect on other objects. Emission from the materials is not enough to light the scene. So I will add the spotlight to the lamp. I want to add a couple more light sources near the house, but I don't want to model anything, so I will duplicate the part of my street lamp and add that to the house. This time I will change the spotlight to the point light. So far this is just a night scene, but I want to create the day and night cycle. So I need the sun in my scene. It doesn't matter where you place the sun in your scene, it is going to behave the same. So I am moving it above the building and I am going to angle it a little bit. Let's add the keyframes for the strength of the sun. In the middle of the timeline I will add the maximum strength and at the frames 25 and 175 I will disable the sun to imitate the night. Now we need to animate the lamps. We can use keyframes, but I decided to use drivers in this scene. I parented them to the strength of the sun, but I needed the opposite value. I need to turn the lights on when the sun's strength is low, and I need to turn the lamps off when the strength value of the sun is high. So I took the maximum value of the sun, which is 10. I deducted the sun value at the current moment, which is var. The value was too low for my scene, so I multiplied that by 15. It is working now, but the sun is changing the light gradually. We need to turn on and turn off the lights instantly. So make sure you use constant interpolation and that will work like a charm. Another great thing about drivers is copying them to other objects. So I copied this driver setup to other lamps in my scene to have the same effect. And finally, I copied those drivers to the emissive materials in the windows. I deducted the value and offset the timing a little bit to make the animation more interesting. And here is the final render. I rendered everything in Eevee and in Cycles to have the comparison. And again, if you want to see more detailed course of this scene, please check my Skillshare, I will leave the link in the description below. I have 4 hour course where I explain every step I make in detail. Thank you for watching and see you in the other videos.